Hello, it is a great pleasure to be here. I am Fabiana Serato. I am an architect, an entrepreneur, and a self-researcher. I am here today representing Isaac, which is an international service for the internationalization of Conscientiology, a non-profit organization that aims opening doors and building bridges between culture and people. It's a Conscientiocentric institution. And this institution is responsible for the project that we are presenting today, which we call the Bridged Researchers. This project has been created to bring together Conscientiology researchers from all over the world in order to facilitate knowledge exchange and sharing of international experience. Usually we uh, hold this the bridge researcher every two months, but we'll let you know. And today we have the pleasure to have with me here today, Patricia Barbosa, who is going to talk. Hello, welcome everybody. Thank you so much Fabiana for the presentation. I hope you enjoy and take advantage of this chat and let's make it a light and debate, okay? So please participate. Great. Thank you, Patricia. Feel very welcome. Patricia Barbosa is a medical physicist and an evolutionary entrepreneur. She has been researching conscienciology and projectology since 2007. She has been a volunteer since 2008 and an instructor since 2009. So Patricia, it's really very good to have you here to report, to bring us such an important matter, a really important topic. So feel free to bring your ideas and uh, everybody who is together with us. Also, please uh, feel free to bring questions and everything. So the word belongs to you, Patricia. Oh, right. Yes, Fabiana, and I quite agree. This is kind of an important topic, right? And if we may, uh, it's kind of in fashion as well, right? Self-knowledge, self-awareness, to get to know yourself. In fashion sense, like the ancient Greece, right? Because these are the most basic philosophical questions. And self-research helps us or shed some light on who we are. Okay, but before we start this talk and conversation, I'd like to make an invitation for you all. Take advantage of this moment, open yourself, and let's make this journey together, you know? So grab a piece of paper, a pen, and write down your perceptions. This is an invitation to self-research, a practical one, okay? And to start with, uh, we're going to pass the video so we can start our reflections on the theme. Could you please share that video, Fabiana? Yes, here we go. Nice, right? So we have some different words there, like paragenetics. For those who are here for the first time, please feel free to post your questions, you know, and uh, Fabiana will help us to read them and we'll be answering. And uh, discover yourself. Here is the final invitation, so discover yourself, right? So we're going to start talking about some important things. Uh, the slides, please. Here we go. So self-research, how to do it. Essentially, this is going to be a case study. I'm going to present some tools of self-research based on my personal experiences, right? And the idea is this. So today, most important thing, 
uh, do not believe in anything, not even in what you are hearing right now. Experiment, have your own experiences. And the principle of disbelief is a nice invitation for you to be critic, to increase your rational reasoning, okay? To question in a positive way. This is the main thing about the principle of disbelief. So do not believe, do not swallow. I'm not here telling you like uh, absolute truths. This is one an idea, don't believe. And the second part is experiment. Have your own experiences. Then you're gonna build your own knowledge upon yourself or upon anything else, okay? So a very handy and practical principle. How are we going to conduct this debate uh, today? A brief introduction on the topic and the scope that we're going to would like to interact is to expand self-knowledge through the consensual paradigm. So as we've seen in the video, we have something like paragenetics. We have uh, different cultures. Maybe we have past lives in different cultures. This is all our background. So to do self-research, it goes beyond to the psychological aspects of self-knowledge or self-awareness. And how do we develop this uh, so-called self-research? We're going to see it uh, with a case study. Then we're going to talk a little bit about tools and methodology, personal style and preferences. This is so important. And publication and interest systems. Maybe not exactly on that order, you know, and this is uh, one evidence of self-research. Let's start with that. Well, self-knowledge is kind of a well-known characteristic of psychology, right? We can understand that self-knowledge refers to information about subjective tendencies, such as your our emotional state, our personality traits, and behavioral patterns, right? So, and this is essentially, uh, you have the link there if you want to deep. Uh, what is self-knowledge in psychology? Examples in theories, this is a positive psychology thing. I'm not a specialist in psychology, so the point here is not to deepen this information, but just to talk a little bit about it. Another important thing or well studied in psychology is the self-awareness. So it's a very simple definition of self-awareness uh, that I'm bringing actually. Self-awareness is the ability to see yourself clearly and objectively through reflection and introspection. And I'm sorry if any psychologist is hearing us uh, right now. This is a simple definition I quite know. But the main idea is there, right? And here comes my question. Is self-knowledge and self-awareness synonyms for self-research? And the answer is not quite, not quite, okay? So what is self-research? So self-research, as <clears throat> Waldo Vieira uh, defined that, is the study of oneself with all the evolutionary consequences. And here we have our first difference, right? What are the evolutionary consequences of getting to know yourself better? Okay. And these evolutionary consequences, they arise from this uh, methodological study. And here, another big difference from consensuality, between consensuality and the ordinary or the most common scientific approach is the researcher, you and me, men or women, children, uh, is at the same time the object, the experimenter and the subject. So this is kind of a breaking barrier. This is kind of a clash of paradigms right now. Because we know that in conventional science, the mechanical paradigm, usually the experimenter cannot be the subject 
of the experiences because of all the tendencies, because you won't be able to reproduce that, because it's going to be to person. And the consensuality is the opposite of that. This is why it is a new approach based on a new paradigm to create a new science. And the research is going to be like a voluntary self guinea pig. And the researcher feud is in theory always evolutionary and cosmoethical. So these are two interesting directions to go. Cosmoethics sometimes works or always works as a compass, you know, showing us the better direction towards evolution. A lot of difficult and different words. If you have some questions, please just ask us, okay? I'll be kind of explaining these things little by little. So at this moment, you've already perceived that uh, self-research is not just the self-knowledge, right? It is a systematic study of yourself. So it uses a scientific methodology, but within a different paradigm, which is the consensual paradigm. And one interesting and very important thing, it is a pillar of consensuality. And consensuality is a science that studies the consciousness, but in a broader way, in a wider way than the conventional psychology or sociology. Okay, we are focused on the consciousness. So here we have consensuality and self-research is a pillar to build this science. So far, so good. Okay, so here we have a lens upon ourselves and how can we uh, change this lens? You know, how can we expand this approach of self-knowledge? Yes, Fabiana. Yes, uh, I would. Uh, I would like to for you to elaborate, Patricia, a little bit more on the difference between self knowledge and self research. Ah, okay, great. So, self knowledge, as we've seen, is knowing yourself in simpler words. Is knowing yourself, is getting to know your characteristics is getting to know your traits, your emotional pattern. How are you feeling right now? Uh, why do you behave as you behave? So it's knowledge about yourself, okay? Self-awareness is to be conscious of your manifestation. So you are aware. So self-awareness is an important trait or an important skill to reach self-knowledge because if you're not aware if you live like a, in a daydream or if you're kind of a robot you wake uh, every day you wake up every day get up out of your bed go to work come back and uh, you're not aware of everything that is surrounding you so how can you discover yourself so self-awareness is a skill that is very important, which is kind of a skill to develop self-observation, okay? okay? And self-knowledge is really knowing yourself. The self-research is a method, okay. okay? Is a system because we are researching, we are investigating, and it's a scientific methodology for you to study yourself. So self-research in a broader way or in general way could be a tool to develop self-knowledge, right? So, okay, I wanna know myself better and how can I do it? Oh, there is a path, there is a path that can be followed, which is the self-research methodology. Is that clear? Great, right, it's clear, thank you. Okay, thank you for the question. So here, here we have, so the self-research is the systematic study of yourself, okay? And as we said, we are going to use this scientific methodology. So we have tools. We have a step-by-step -step process that will lead you 
to get to know yourself better, which is the self-knowledge. But let's shift a little bit the lens that we are using to look at ourselves. And why is that? If we consider simple sociology or psychology or other, even other uh, branches of knowledge as neuroscience, there is, some people will say that you are a product of your brain. Uh, other people, other branch of knowledge will say that the mind is way bigger than the brain. If you bring religious approach, you're even more than that. So here is the thing. You can perceive, so depending on the branch of knowledge that you're looking at or researching, developing or researching, uh, some aspects are, are hidden, are not considered. For example, the bioenergies. If you are using kind of a, a ordinary approach, bioenergies, you're not taking it into consideration. So you're narrowing your uh, source of information because bioenergies interactions can be a great source of information. How do I react? When I enter a bar, a pub, how do I feel, you know? It tells that the energy of the environment can be a reflection or it brings information. If I start perceiving myself in a bioenergetic manifestation. Oh, the holosoma. The holosoma uh, here brings that we have many bodies not only this physical body, because we are considering that we can, we are consciousness that lived a lot of different lives. And if we live a different multiple lives, uh, this is not the first body, physical body that I have. So probably if the consciousness is not dead, I have another bodies as well, like the emotional body, the psychosoma or the energetic body. Oh, now it changes completely my approach. Now I have like four bodies to investigate, you know. It's, it's not only my uh, physiological reactions, it's going to be my mental reactions, my emotional reactions, my bioenergetic reactions. See how we are kind of enlarging the perspective or changing the lens that we are looking at just ourselves? Cosmoethics, which is a very important thing, and don't worry, we're going to deepen each of these concepts along the presentation. Cosmoethics is kind of a universal code of ethics. It is kind of, if you're following the natural flow of the universe, of evolution, you will perceive that there are some embedded laws on that. For instance, the karmic laws, action and reaction, okay? Action and reaction laws. So uh, this is one topic of cosmoetics, among others. We're gonna talk more about that. Universalism. And here is the pillar that really interests us, which is the consensual laboratory. So the self-research is a pillar of the consensual paradigm. So it is very important. We're trying to develop a science of the consciousness, right? So one way of doing that is studying the consciousness, but not only from a faraway perspective, essentially looking at yourself. So far, so good, people? Yes, uh, we have, uh, Patricia, we have an interesting question here. Mm -hmm. what, to do. what is the most important characteristic to develop self-research? Ah, okay, Fabiana. So I think that the most important characteristic to develop this is to open yourself. I've just said a lot of different things like past lives, multiple dimensions, bioenergies. If you do not uh, get rid of your prejudices or your cultural layers, if you really don't 
open yourself to that, you're going to put a lot of barriers to this self-research process. You know? So one of the most important characteristics, as I understand, there are a lot of, is the consensual openness. The open. And what the, would you tell for people who are afraid of going beyond the physical per perception, for, for example? Going beyond the physical perception? Well, uh, parapsychism is also an important skill, right? But again, you need to be open to that. Because if you live in a very materialistic culture, uh, where parapsychism is kind of a hidden topic, so how are you going to use that skill? Your sixth sense, so to speak, your sens extra sensory perceptions, right? So to speak. So this openness is the basis for that. And yes, let's use all of these tools. But along the presentation, it will be clear how I managed to use each of these and we can deepen these concepts as well, okay? Okay, great, thank you. Okay, so what is the self-research process? We're talking about the science, right? So let's kind of have this overview on the process and then we can start of each, we're gonna talk about each of these steps. As in any other science, first I have an issue, I have a problem right here. Okay, so here on the upper left corner, you will have a problem, a big question mark. So a problem, an issue, a question, something to improve, something that you want to improve, a characteristic that you want to improve, uh, something that you're curious about a theme, for instance, peace, for instance, uh, I don't know, working with cancer, trying to figure out the cure of a disease. What are your main curiosities, positive or negative, you know? So the first step is to have a problem, a big question mark, like in any other science. Then from this point on, you're gonna set your goals. Let's say that you define the problem, something that you want to improve. Then you're gonna set your goals. I wanna be a more organized person. This is a goal. Then you're going to create strategies to achieve that goal. But how can I be more organized? What are the tools that I should use on a very practical manner? So select tools and techniques to achieve that goal. And then the next step could be observe and register the effects on you. Take notes right now. Be your own scientist. You know, now that you are more open, you're willing, you're giving it a try, be your own scientist, you know? And then you make a balance, evaluate the results, and it could be an endless cycle, like evolution is an endless cycle. Then you can reevaluate. Oh, what about that thing? Uh, after doing this whole cycle, how is my organization right now? Still needs improvement, set another goal and create new strategies and select tools and techniques and observe and register and balance, make a balance and evaluate the results. One of the very important thing about self-research is to share the experiences. We're talking about a scientific method a little bit different to study yourself. And here is another important thing. You are allowed to be who you really are. You're free to express yourself. And here is this deep and simple, but deep invitation to be yourself. It is okay to be yourself with all your strongs, with all your weaknesses, with all your lacks or absent traits. It is okay to be yourself. 
And when you share these experiences, it is wonderful because you're kind of updating yourself in front of everybody. And it's an evolutionary update. And this helps a lot of the people. People within this dimension, intraphysical dimension, and also people in another dimension without physical body, the consciousness or extra physical consciousness, as we name them, who may be your colleagues over centuries, and they know you like that. Oh, Patricia has these, these, and that characteristics. I like her because of these, these, and that. Oh, I don't like her because of these, 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 and that. Oh, she bothers me when she does that. And so people have this view or an hetero image, this perception all about you. And when you share your experiences, this is a very important step to update yourself and to make a very fine and nice invitation, which is, are you going to come along? Are you going to come along in this evolutionary path? We're developing our personal and group evolution. We're making a great effort to be better consciousness. And this has a lot of benefits, not only personal, but group benefits. Okay, so open this big box that is yourself and let it flow and share your experience. This is very existential for you and for everybody in many dimensions. Okay, so here is this, the highlight point of the self-research process. And you don't need to be done, you don't need to be perfect to share your experience. So essentially, you can share the experience in any of these steps, you know? You can share an experience, for instance, how did you do to set your goals? You can write a paper on that. Oh, setting goals for self-improvement. Well, nice topic, right? Or you can share your experiences on how to better observe and register the effects of changing behaviors. See that you're in a different part of the self-research process, but that's not a problem. So the self-research doesn't, doesn't need to be complete because it's an endless process. The evolution is an endless process. You can grow and mature indefinitely, okay? So if you're a very strategic person, you can write about creating strategies to achieve your goals using tools, nice tools, okay? So here's this invitation for sharing the experiences. Yes, you're allowed to expose yourself. It's okay to do that. Okay, so let's talk about a little bit about the self-research process. Okay, Patricia, I got it. There's a process to open myself. It's very important. But I have no clue on what should I focus. Okay, so the first step is that we have kind of a problem here to solve or an issue. Or you want to deepen your research on a nice theme. But you don't know what. So you can start your self-diagnosis. And self-diagnosis helps you both ways. First, you can shed some light on what is the issue, what is the problem that you must uh, focus on. And also, the self-diagnosis also helps you shedding some light on setting your goals. So here comes an invitation for you right now. Uh, what will be interesting questions that you would like to ask to yourself right now. Let's make this exercise together. Who am I? A consciousness in evolution. Is that so? Is that really so? I don't know. That could be a problem. How can I prove myself that I am a consciousness uh, evolving, right? Uh, another another thing that you can ask, 
oh, I'd like to be more flexible. So it can also shed some light on the problem or on a goal, see? So this self-diagnosis helps us. Or I admire calm people. When you're looking at yourself and perceiving these steps, essentially, you're already making a self-diagnosis. For instance, I admire calm people. Why? Because I like calmness, something that I want to achieve. Maybe this shows a little bit of my anxiety. Maybe I'm too aggressive. This is why I admire people that have, that have skills, abilities that I don't. So this is the self-research. This is the starting self-research process, right? Yeah, Patricia, that was exactly my question. And here Patricia. comes Fabiana, probably with another nice question. I uh, First, I would like to point out that we have some nice people attending your live. We have Claudia, Regina, Marcelo, more people are also arriving. But uh, one thing which is very interesting, welcome everybody. One thing that really caught my attention when you present, Patricia, is exactly that. How can someone discover what they need, you mean the problem, if the person is still in the beginning of self-knowledge process, of self-research process. Now, how could you uh, help us to understand more about it? Okay, nice, nice question. And placing simple question. These are kind of simple things. Start looking at yourself and now self-awareness is an interesting thing. So make this reflection right now. What are the things that I like on me about me or about someone else? What are the things that I don't like? What bothers me? You know, what bothers you is a very nice indicative, you know, or indicator of something that you need to work with, you know, something that you're always asking. You keep asking. If you work in a group, you ask the group to be like that. You ask your family to be like that. You ask your boss to be like that. Oh, this is kind of a sign of some indicators on how you start to making this self-diagnosis, you know? What are you constantly demanding from other people? Attention, affection, patience. Uh, flexibility or uh, calmness. What are your complaints? So start observing your behavior and the behavior of people surrounding you is a good way to make this first step on self diagnosis. Good enough? Clear enough? Yes, yes. Very important that. Thank you. Okay. Yes, and uh, yes, and here is the thing. I presented this whole process of self-research in a didactic and pedagogical way, but sometimes, and most of the time, most of the time, uh, it doesn't flow like that. We have some feelings, we have some impressions, we have something that uh, feels good. You know, and you go with that. I'm going to present my case study and you see that it's not mathematical. So that whole process there is kind of for you to have a big picture if you want to start it right now. But essentially, probably, if you're interested in this debate, you probably uh, have some level of self-awareness and self-knowledge and you probably do it intuitively, you know? So value that, value your perceptions, value your questionings, your inquiries, you know, that you've been doing since you were a child. Because this is uh, important data uh, of yourself, okay? And yes, the process is way more intuitive 
then what is written there in big balloons and boxes. No, it doesn't go like that. It was just a summary that I placed. And as I was preparing this presentation, it just go like that. It's just, it really went like that. I said, no, oh, I know that I do self-research, but how can I organize that in a presentation? You know, because we're not like an outside object. We're very complex. We're, we have very layers of manifestation. And sometimes we're already doing this self-research. But the thing is, we need to be aware of that, okay? We need to be aware of that and maybe more professional or more scientific relative to this approach. So far so good, people, so let's keep going. And here it comes. So let's see how it flows and how it goes when we are studying uh, uh, someone else. So here I'm presenting myself right now as a guinea pig and I'm also inviting you during this presentation to put yourself in a position of a guinea pig. Meaning, sometimes people are mirrors of ourselves. Sometimes we look at the person and we see ourselves on that. Mm. Integrally, partially, or we don't see ourselves at all. This is information, okay? So take advantage of this moment and make this first step towards your self-knowledge right now, okay? And as we say, to develop self-research, sometimes you need to take things personally, okay? There is this good law of conviviality to avoid fights, who is, oh, don't take it personally, right? This is a good thing when you're in a group. Uh, Dramatize things, don't be so offended, don't take it personally, it's just me, I'm sorry if I bother you. And here's the invitation for you, when you're doing self-research, take it personally. If something is caught your attention right now, get it to you, put it inside your personal bag and see, I'm going to look at that. Oh, this is bothering me. This is Patricia. No, 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 no. Maybe it's a trait that I have that she's reflecting that. So put it on your bag. Put it on your account and take it personally in order to do, right? Take it personally in order to do self-research, meaning bring it to your realm of manif personal manifestation. Take responsibility for that trait. Say, no, I, I have it. Or if I don't, or if I'm not sure, I'm going to investigate that. Okay? Okay, so the tone is set. Let's see the case study that I'm bringing it to you right now, which is developing evolutionary emotional maturity. Oh, very nice name. Did I just set the goal from the beginning? No. And to be honest, I just organized that name like a couple of days ago for you to see how the process goes, you know, and it flows. So I'm interested in develop a more mature posture. And, but not only being mature an evolutionary maturity. And it has to do with my emotional behavior, okay? It has to do with my level of manifestation as a consciousness in an uh, evolutionary scale. If we can do a scale of how mature and how evolved you are. If you're interested in these topics, we have some other lectures and debates. You can deepen your knowledge uh, subscribing at uh, Isaac's channel. Seek for this information, okay? And here it goes. So what was my problem, my issue, the question? Or actually something to improve. A long, long time ago, I was bothered. Something was bothering me. 
See that I didn't start with tools and self-awareness and a lot of complicated and polished things. No, I had a behavior and it was bothering me, you know. Probably it was bothering somebody else or people around me, but that's not the point. The point that it was bothering me. I was annoyed and I didn't like uh, the way that I manifested myself in terms of affection and sexuality. It was kind of bothering me. I felt a misadjustment. This is not nice. A lot of inner conflict related to those areas of our life or conscientious manifestation. So right on, I, I already had a problem, you know. I didn't need to do a very big self-diagnosis. Just by observing myself my whole life, I didn't like that aspect of myself. So I already shed the light on a goal. So if I don't like the way I manifest myself, how do I want to be? I want to I wanna have relationships pro-evolution, you know, more interstitial. I don't want to be caught up with all that drama that we usually have inside relationships, which are kind of immature and hurt people and hurt yourself and so forth, so on. So how is to have a more mature or pro-evolution relationships? That was my goal. I didn't even know what that was, but that was my goal. And an inner value that I was kind of recovering and remembering some values, more interesting values. I was recovering that. Uh, and here comes the cosmoethical approach. Let's say, as a hypothesis, that before I was born, I attended a course as a deaf person without this physical body, without being Patricia yet. Before I was born, let's say, I attended a course, which is an intermissive course, which is kind of like, uh, it was kind of a pit stop between lives. Then I deepened my self-analysis, I was able to look at my past lives, see all the things that I got it right, check, and see all the things that I got wrong. And I was born in this life with some planning, with some goals, in order to develop myself. And these ideas is kind of a hidden in the back on the back of my mind, you know, and I was born and I was here and then you have received this new body and a new family and everything is kind of chaotic because this intraphysical dimension demands a lot, requires a lot of effort. And but out of the sudden, I kind of remember this cosmoetica, which is this larger ethics, but I don't know exactly what it is. But I know that my behavior right now does not sound good. Nobody has had to tell me that. It was kind of an inner conflict of my values. So this is why this goal of being more cosmoetic relationships arose, a more advanced pro-evolutionary ethics. Uh, another goal is to express myself in a more physiological way. And then the, the, the bigger goal is to compose an evolutionary duo, which is a couple, a man and women, you know, a couple composed by a man and a woman, uh, that they're there together, not because of they love each other or they're interested to in each other's finances, bank account, or it's kind of, oh, that's handy to be here. Uh, that's a person that I know. I have a lot of affinities. I like, I'm in love. It goes beyond that. An evolutionary duo is a technique that two people come together to evolve together. They have like a mission in this life to fulfill, you know, and this mission is based on inter-assistance. This mission is based on recomposing or rewriting uh, your past. And this is kind of the evolutionary duo, a very mature 
or a technique for you to develop more mature relationships. Yes, Fabiana? Yes, we have an interesting question about uh, from Claudia. I'm going to place it here. If I have more than one goal to approach, mm -hmm. from which one should I start my self-research? Oh, that's great, Claudia. That's a great question. Thank you for that. Usually we do. Welcome aboard, right? Usually we do. Uh, that depends on your uh, tendencies on how to do that. Think about it. What is the most important thing that if I start changing will give me more results? Because this is the thing about that goal that I said. I had some other self-researchers that I could present you. I'm writing about right now uh, financial dependencies. I have interesting working with peace as well. But why did I choose this one? Because as far as I understand, now I came to a point that I am okay, uh, not mature enough, but I came to a point that I need to deal with that, you know? Because if I deal with that, I know that I'll have a lot of positive effects. It's like a halo effect. It's gonna be a good big wave of change. This is kind of a core problem that is kind of uh, lives after lives since my childhood, it appears and it appears again, and in adolescence it appears again, and in adulthood it appears again. And I said, okay, I really need to focus on that. This is kind of an intelligent thing that will lead me to another level, you know? And sometimes it bothers a lot. This is not an easy and nice thing to do. To study peace is delicious, you know? But to really face your traits and say, okay, I'm going to face it, I'm going to overcome it, because I understand that if I do, there's going to be a lot of benefits, not only for myself, but from a lot of people. But again, did I know it from the beginning? No. <laughs> so I'm going to keep the presentation on, going on, and maybe see if you can spot uh, this goal that you should work with that. And here's another thing. Choose a goal. The important is this. Choose a goal. Do it. If you perceive that something else is more important, you can turn it. You go refining your, your approach, you know? This is like the summary of years and years and years of self-research that I'm presenting to you in an organized way. But it didn't went like that, okay? But the important thing is to open yourself and start it. Start it because as the, the path goes, you will understand better it will be clearer for you. Okay, Claudia, if you have any questions, please let us know. Let us know as well if it is clear enough. So here comes self-diagnosis, right? Some tools and strategies. First thing is the self-observation. So if you develop this self-awareness, the way I behave, I'm sorry, it's misspelled, the way I behave on daily basis, intra and extra physically. So this is exactly what I said to you. It was kind of bothering me, you know, it's kind of, it was kind of restraining me, intra and extra physically. I had such immature postures, affective sexual postures, intra and extra physically. So this is not nice. And this inner conflict that I said, because uh, inside myself, I, had, I knew that something should be better. This is kind of an inner uh, assurance that this is not the best way to manifest myself. So I had this boiling evolutionary or rising evolutionary values versus past life values, okay, which is past or automatic behaviors. And hetero observation as well, direct feedbacks. I asked some people for a list of traits 
strong traits, which are kind of our qualities that helps us, weak traits, which are something that we need to overcome, absent traits, uh, like missing or lacking traits. So thank you, Claudia, very clear. Thank you for your question as well. Nice to know. And ask someone, what are the list of your traits? You can do that. Uh, then it's going to start giving some guidance, you know. Another thing. Now, how can I deepen this self-diagnosis? Let's deepen in this analysis. Uh, I really started consensual therapy, and now, oh, sorry, I misspelled that. It's 2007, okay, in 2008, like a couple of years ago, not, not just a couple of years ago. So it's 2007 and 2008. So right in the beginning of my contact with consensuality, this is bothering me so much that I attend some consensual therapy sessions to deal with that. And to, yes, to get to know myself better. So consensual therapy is an interesting thing. And if you're abroad, I think you have some options to do that. And if you can visit Brazil, and yes, you can do that in English as well. And there is another course, which is the ECP2, which is an advanced field course, a dynamic that we can work with our, in our energies. If you're interested to know more, contact us, please. Uh, so right on the beginning, 2008, I was starting my research and my volunteer at Consensiology. I had two retrocognitions right there, out of the blue, with no preparation. And these retrocognitions answered some of these questions. Who am I? An intermissivist evolving. Where am I? In the terms, why this country? Why this family? Why this city? But especially, why this family? Where am I inside this family? Why? And what for? So I was able to, it was a small flash, and so I was able to recognize myself in a past lives with two of my family members. And there, the result was immediately, immediately I understood my affective and sexual manifestations. The whole, the root is not in this life. It comes from other lives. And because I'm here with these two people so close, so into my family, my nuclear family, I start behaving again with the same sexual immaturities, with the same emotional immaturities, because I just was, I was just born in this family. So an instant understanding self-knowledge. And another thing that was kind of interesting as well was a fraternal look towards one of the family members. So I stop and I adjust my self-image. Uh, I no longer act as a victim. Oh, the relationship was very difficult, very troubled, sometimes even too aggressive. And I stopped acting as a victim because I realized that I was in a past life, a former perpetrator of this person. And the dedramatization stopped just like that. Said, here you are, and this is who you are, and this is why you're in this family. I said, wow. So I'm not so nice and beautiful and peaceful. So let's stop this word right now. It's coming from lives after lives. So this is one way, okay? Oh, but I don't have a, a retrocognition. And from this point on, I didn't have any other so strong retrocognitions, but it's more than 10 years, right? Uh, and I'm still dealing with the consequences of this information. So another uh, way of doing that, consensual teaching helped me a lot. So IPC is another institution. There is an interesting course, which is the CPC course, the course of projectology and consensuality. I was an instructor there. I was beginning my, this was the first course that I, that I taught. And in this course, you need to set some goals to overcome, to yourself, to improve your self-research. So I used the course, the teaching process, to develop emotional maturity, you know, so step by step. 
And then, uh, with some other, other things, a better choice of partners. So based on new values, so little by little, I was recovering and I was able to st start changing my behavior, okay? So, but how did I do it? What were the tools and the strategies that I used to really do it? So when you think about uh, research methods, we can kind of use a lot of them here. So there are some interesting things. So acquiring knowledge. There's so many ways to acquire knowledge. Courses, books, self-reflection. We're going to talk about that. Taking notes. This is kind of research methodology. Organizing your files. See here, you have a lot of things in this picture here. You have files, you have checklists, uh, you have uh, graphs here to evaluate your performance. Yes, you can do it to yourself. How is your evolutionary performance? How far have you, you gone? Uh, what do you want to reach? You can revise your notes. That's a good habit. You can plan. Here, this picture said, oh, business, business ideas. What are your uh, self-overcoming ideas? What uh, your, your ideal self? How do you want to be? You know? And you can plan. This, this is going to be your evolutionary business plan. So what is your evolutionary business? Mine is this. I need to end this life knowing and sharing way more emotional maturity relative to effective sexual relationships than when I was born. This is one piece of my evolutionary business, you know? Uh, more mature and evolved conviviality, okay? And then you can make this evolutionary balance. How am I so far? What do I need to keep improving? And so forth, so on. So these are some steps to do a methodology of self-research. But here's the thing. There is a lot of techniques, a lot of tools, but what suits you best? And here you have this general methodology, general tools, general strategies, and the ideal thing or the most intelligent thing is to match the tools with your personal preferences and tendencies. How so? So while developing this long pattern of developing the evolutionary emotional maturity, I was able over the years to develop my personal methodology of self-research. And it's kind of matching my preferences, my tendencies to what I need to do. So one thing that suits me best, courses and books. Why? To expand knowledge, to open my thoughts, my sentiments, my energies to new possibilities. When I read a book, especially consensuality books or positive books, uh, it is kind of changing the way you're thinking. It changes the energy of my environment. I'm kind of clarifying, it's kind of a self-enlightenment, self-clarification, but I'm also clarifying all the extra physical consciousness that are kind of following my reading, you know? So this is a very nice, good tool. And look how nice it is. I am applying some strong traits that I have, like rationality, like intellectuality. So when you're using your best features at most, everything tends to flow better and you create a more positive environment around you, okay? So these are one of the <clears throat> examples that we have. 700 Consentiology Experiments, you can download these two first books, the 700s and the Consentiogram for free. These are like test books. They have a lot of questions for you to know yourself. They have a whole session about emotions. They have a whole session about psychosoma. And you can download it for free. For instance, that consentiogram there, there is a nice session, which is a whole session about sexuality. Consin, which is the intraphysical consciousness, soma, and sex. 
And if I choose here, I'm reading the book right now. If I choose the question number 17, uh, here's an interesting question. As a sociological aspect as well, what is your predominant personal attitude in the face of phylogeny, misogyny, andrelatry, and androphobia? Because these are so uh, updated uh, themes nowadays, right? And this is interesting. How do I react upon each of these big groups, you know? And then you deepen your self-knowledge. This is the book, right? I don't know if you can see that. This is the question. But please download for free. And this is how we do it. You have some nice questions there. This is the 70, the one that I was reading for you. And this is the consensual Not an easy book, but a very worthy thing. Start with 700 experiments. Then you get to, and then you get used to do this kind of asking questions for yourself. And because I have this rationality, strong trait, I like to think, you know, I like self-reflection. So I'm going to apply another strong trait, which is this analytical mindset. See, as a professional, I am a physicist, so I do have this analytical mindset. So let's make the most of it self-reflection and using laboratories. So I took a lot of evolutionary dual laboratories. What are these laboratories? Laboratories are these physical places that you can see in the picture there. Uh, we have some campuses of consensiology campi um, all over the world. Here we have one in the city Foz do Iguaçu in Brazil. And this is one of the laboratory where you go there. You have a table, uh, a desk, a chair, sometimes an armchair, sometimes a bed for you to relax, work with your energies. There are some books there, paper and pen, for you to really deepen your self-reflection and interact with what we called the extra-physical team of helpers. But you're saying, well, Patricia, I cannot go to Foz do Iguaçu or Rio de Janeiro or some place in Brazil like in Maracé. I cannot travel to this country that there is a laboratory. There is absolutely no problem. You can do it on your house. Choose a room, choose a topic like a room that you can be isolated for one hour and a half, for three hours. Uh, say to the people that live with you, please don't bother me, I'm going to do a self-reflection session. Please respect, this is my private space. And you really can be in your house, a laboratory. So choose a thing. You can do this laboratory of evolutionary duel in your house. You can make this experiment wherever you are. Choose a more cozy and uh, an environment, work with your energies, install a nice view, and start reflecting and studying that topic. Make your own laboratory. Yes, Fabiana? Wow, I am very happy with so many tools for self-research. Thanks for presenting all that. And about the laboratory you presented, Patricia, what you just suggested is for us to transform one room, one part of our house, enter in this room and sort of transform in a laboratory, right? Exactly, exactly. Choose a more optimized room, a room that uh, people won't bother you or disturb you for a period of time, a more organized, with not so many clutter, right, or stuff. And uh, if you know how to work a little bit with your energies, try to evoke the consciousness, the extra physical consciousness could be helpers, that could be helpers for you to understand better that topic, for instance, cosmoethics. I want to understand better cosmoethics. Grab some books that you have if you don't have, just grab a piece of paper and do this reflection, working with your energies and having this deepened look 
inside yourself. Yes, we can do it, you know, we can do it. I have a friend of mine that used to live in Rio de Janeiro that he did over than 30 laboratories in her place, you know, and uh, the result was fantastic. When we traveled, he used to use the laboratory, but there, in the city that he lived, he didn't have this structure and he created that and the results were fantastic. So here is the invitation. Another way uh, that is quite important, still applying strong traits, is the parapsychism, you know? So I quite like, and this is something that I'm trying to make a synergism in the past two years of lucid projections, which is the out-of-body experiences, and the penta, which is the personal energetic task. For those who don't know, what Penta is, we recommend for you to read. There are some things online in English you can read, but in a very brief way. Penta is a technique that you're going to do to donate your best fraternal energies 50 minutes every day. is like an appointment that you have with an extra physical helper that you do it for the rest of your life in order to assist people. Of course, you were assisted as well, okay? So there, it is a technique. You need to prepare yourself to do that. And uh, yes, so I quite like these two specific techniques when I'm talking about parapsychism. And here I have another example of a personal methodology. Taking notes is extremely important and revising, revisiting, and analyzing those notes as well. And I just discovered that I'm good at taking notes. Yeah, I, could, I take notes. Here I have the two examples for you that I have my Penta notes. And this is like uh, 2015, some notes. Uh, I used to take that with blank, uh, separate sheets, blank sheets. I used to enjoy that a lot. But over the time, I perceived that I'm not so good on revising and analyzing what I write. So I'm very good in collecting data, but not so good on analyzing that data, which is extremely important. Otherwise, this is useless, right? All the notes are useless. So what did I do? And see how the personal tendencies also evolves, the personal methodology also evolves. So a couple of years ago, I bought a notebook. Why? So here I have this black notebook for my Penta notes. And this is nice because now I no longer have a blank sheet. I need to turn the pages. And as I turn the pages, sometimes I reread. Re re I read something that I write a long time ago. And it's amazing because it's exactly the same situation or in another step. Uh, of situation that I'm working with. For instance, when I set this goal, and the same thing for the Lucid Projection Notebooks. So this is one way that uh, it's very fluid, your personal methodology, and then you can improve it and change it as time goes by. So it was very interesting because one day I set a goal and a, a Penta request, and then I, out of the sudden, opened that book I was having some difficulties with some leaders at work and I said, no, I'm going to put that in Penta because it has to do with healthy conviviality. And then when I was just flipping the page to write now the day's experience, I was just re reading all the previous experience relative to that same topic. I said, oh, I'm really working with that. You know, I'm putting effort on that. This is nice. And yes, today is a little bit better than like three months ago. So this is very, very important, you know? And see, I'm overcoming a whip crate, which is kind of the dispersion. Oh, I write there and never go there because I move my interests and I have these and that. Now a notebook. Maybe tomorrow it will be another thing, right? And here we're almost reaching the end of our presentation. 
uh, what are the results and the benefits of this self-research? So the goal is to have this more evolutionary emotional maturity. maturity. One of the results is a better choice of partners. And now we can broaden it a little bit, like colleagues, friends, uh, sexual partners. My values were refreshed. I'm still making that effort to recover more and more cosmoetic values, more and more uh, goals of this life mission that I have, which is also to recompose past, let's say, less mature relationships. And uh, yes, this is a nice result. And one of the benefits that I learned from each relationship that when I started applying this research was to avoid impositions. I start uh, respecting more the person's manifestation in another level, you know? And I understood that these impositions, when you want to control someone, when you want to be bossy at someone, when you want to do this and that, usually it is a reaction based on a certain level of fear. So I came to realize that probably in the past, this is one way of surviving. You know, marriage, especially for women, we were centuries ago, you don't earn money, you don't, you're not able to uh, work. So you really need to manage a marriage. You need to marry someone to survive, right? And sometimes this relationship, you need to survive the relationship. So you develop a lot of skills, manipulation, seduction, and you need to mold the person. The person shouldn't, shouldn't, could not go away, otherwise you would starve, you know? So these are past life. Uh, memories that arise in this life and reactions based in a certain level of fear. But nowadays, it doesn't make any sense, you know? So you can avoid impositions. People are free to be who they are. And you put some limits of this manifestation, which are cosmoethical limits, based on a respectful thing. You can admire and you can disagree of the person at the same time. Cosmoethical physiological adjustments, it has to do way more with sexuality, being more adjusted in this feminine body, embracing this life as a woman in a more centered and meaningful life, you know, not so struggling with the gender or with something or all the past lives, I had a lot of power with another gender, and no, 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 let's manifest in a more physiological way. And another interesting thing is the and a more authentic manifestation. So the repression, it is okay to be yourself, increasing self-care. The more you deepen your self-research, the more you expand your self-knowledge, the less you fight with yourself. And this is interesting because the more, the more you look and understand inside of you, it becomes easier to understand and respect someone outside of you. So self-knowledge is an excellent tool to improve the quality of your relationships. Because you can increase your self-care, you can in increase your inner balance and also your inner peace. Remember that I said that I have a lot of conflicts based on values over there. When we have these adjustments, I was gaining this inner peace. The conflicts were decreasing and this inner peace was increasing. Yes, Fabiana. Very nice benefits, Patricia. I was thinking while uh, hearing you that um, one other benefit, I don't know what you think about, is that we refrain from needing to satisfy the entire society. And the oh. need of satisfying uh, everybody, right? 
This is very interesting, uh, Fabiana, because we're sort of raised. This is kind of in any culture, you have this value, right? You need to be nice, you need to be good, you need to assist others, you need to match your parents' expectations, right? Not really. <laughs> That's not, how we were raised. That's correct. Not, not, not really. You need to match your evolutionary expectations, you know? You need to set your values. Sometimes you're in that family, you were born in that family as a hypothesis to teach something new to those consciousness which are your parents. So why mimic them? If you're mimicking the people around you, hmm, are you really doing your job? Are you making your contribution? We don't know. So this is why it is so important to rescue or remember or recycle our values in a more evolutionary uh, goal, you know, because values are very practical things. These are not principles or something that I wish to do. Values are really things that come from your actions. So show me your weekly schedule that I can tell you your values, your real values. What do you do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? These show your values, you know, what you're spending your time and putting your energy and your effort on, on a daily basis. This is what you really value, okay? So let's make it a more evolutionary routine, right? And the last thing, remember that I showed you the open box there. So the last thing is really to share. This is me sharing and thank you so much for being here and that I'm able to share my experiences with you. But we can also share with publications. This is an entry of an encyclopedia, which is the Consensiology Encyclopedia that any researcher, you don't need to be a volunteer, any researcher of Consensiology can write an entry in this encyclopedia. The only prerequisite is that you follow that some guidelines, structure, like any other paper that you have to read, there's some rules, and it must be based on the consensual paradigm. You must be researching from this lens of consensuality, but you're totally free to write that. And this is one of the goals I just published in 2014, the end of the year 2014, an entry of this encyclopedia called Evolutionary Pleasure. And the evolutionary pleasure is the benevolent satisfaction a pleasant sensation, a matured emotion derived from a cosmoetical act or achievement that drives personal and group evolution, indicating that the consent is leaving behind hedonism towards experiencing the trinomy of self-motivation, work and leisure and this self-motivation, work and leisure has to do with evolution. What I do day by day has to do with evolution, you know? And this is self-motivation and work. Here I'm also talking about volunteering work and self-motivation to develop a new science. And it becomes a leisure. So I can say bye-bye to hedonism. You know, it's a more fruitful uh, type of leisure and it's a lifestyle. Okay, guys, thank you so much for your attention, for your questions. I hope it was helpful somehow. Here's my personal email. So please feel free to get in contact so we can exchange more experiences and ideas. Thank you all. It was Really, really interesting, Patricia, hearing you all the tools. So many ideas came to my mind, so many tools that we can use to self-research. It's really important, everything you taught us. And uh, before we conclude, I would like to, to point 
you all that are attending us that now we are going to have the next the bridge researcher which will be with Deborah Leite. It will be on April 9. So mark in your calendar, you know, April 9. And she will be talking exactly about the two that uh, Patricia mentioned. She will be talking about a personal laboratory. The difference is that this laboratory is called Serenarium. Serenarium lab. And it's a three-day lab. It's a lab in which you are going to stay only with your thoughts, no television, no cell phone. You have enough food. It's like a, a closed hotel only for you to think about yourself. It's a fantastic lab. And it's totally connected with Patricia presented here. You know, it's really amazing. So don't forget April 9 to 30, the same, uh, the same time. And Patricia, it was really important to have you here. It is one of the most important topics, as you mentioned, right? In self-study, self-research. So I would like to, to give you the, a minute for you to conclude and say some words before we, we finish. Please. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd like just to invite you all. So feel free to embrace yourselves and to start or continue or deepen your self research. Welcome aboard to evolution. That's fantastic. Thank you very much once again, Patricia. Thank you, everybody, for being here with us. Thank you for the questions and for participating and for the great vibration you all gave us here today. And we hope to see you soon. Don't forget, April 9, we'll be back here. Thank you once again, Patricia, and see you all soon. Bye-bye.